Welcome to another episode of Chat with Chino. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Jason Ramos with Good Vibes Real Estate Solutions. Welcome to another episode of Chat with Chato. Welcome guys. So last week we talked about a deal that didn't work, right? You guys want to know about some of our deals. This week we're going to talk about a deal that worked. All right. Look at that. Hey, he's Aye. excited over here. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're going to talk about, this is one of mm. our two. Yeah, this, this is a great deal for us. All right. So we're going to tell you a little backstory about it. Um, this is the lead that was, you know, we had for over a year and it was one of these follow-ups. We just kept following up, following up, following up. And finally he was ready. Yep. Finally he got back to us. So it was like, wow. Okay. It was, it, it's a little piece of crap shack. It looked like, it looked like a little, a little baby rancher. rancher in a beautiful and, neighborhood and a beautiful town. So what were the houses going for around it? So in that neighborhood, you got four hundred thousand dollar houses. More than that, even. Yeah, depending on what you do to it. So in this particular niche, this area was about four hundred. So we're like, wow, okay. Yep. Let's do it. But all those houses were at least twice, if not two and a half times, the size of this. Uh huh. So this property is on a huge lot that's buildable. So that's the one thing that we found out from the township. Can we build on it? Yes, we can. So ARV. Right, Jay, we were going back and forth. We're looking up comps. We're, we're, we're dealing my square foot. We're trying to figure out what's the ARV. What did we come up with? We got no idea. That's what we came up with. We, we had no clue because it, it, it's, it all depends on what you're going to do with it. If you're going to rebuild the ranch the way it is right now, then your ARV is much lower. If you're going to knock it down and you know build a nice house next to it, then it's way higher. It's in the 400. So the ARV in this particular situation was speculative at best so and we knew that it would be within the 300 plus range and then repairs same thing same thing <laughs> what are you going to do with it we had no freaking clue all i knew was this is the town that we need to be in this is a hot deal and we knew that we have plenty of buyers that would be salivating over this so that's all we know yep so my my discussion with the seller was what do you want he had no clue, of course. Of course. All right. So, so you threw out a number at him. I threw out eighty thousand, and he said, "No, you know, a buddy of mine that grew up on this same block, he just offered me a hundred. I was like, "Oh my God, a hundred is that too much?" I have no clue. So oh, no. I said, "You know what? Tell you what. If I offered you one on one, would you take it?" <laughs> he said, "I don't know. I knew this guy all my life." I said, "Okay." I wrote up the contract. I emailed it to him. Two days later, I get the call. All right, I'm ready to take your offer. I was like, oh, okay. $101,000. And cool. we took it. We were in there. It was like, okay, cool. So we needed to- Now we got it locked up. Got a contract. It was like, yes, clock is ticking. So- Cool, so- Now we have here. to show the property. So I put, we blasted this thing out to all our buyers and that phone How much was, did we put it out at? I don't know. 125. Don't 125. We, we had no clue what we were doing. And the phone was <laughs> melting. The phone was off the hook. Like everybody yes. called. It was like, wow, we got something here. Yep. Then now, the, this problem. seller was down in North Carolina or yeah, something? North Carolina. So we had an issue. We didn't have access to the property. You know, I thought, relax, I thought that the property was open. Because when we first went there, the door was open. It looked like it didn't have a door in the back. So I was like, yeah, we can get in. No. That door was locked. So we got yep. there, it was locked. I called him, called Nothing. him for a couple of days, no Nothing. answer, no answer, no answer. And this is off the record, guys. I don't recommend doing this, but <laughs> we had one of our guys, contractor, <laughs> broke in, changed the lock, and made it our own, and we put a lockbox on it. I kept trying to call we him. We had to get in. Him. We I had to do our him, inspections. Kept calling him, kept calling him, no answer. So it was like, all right, cool. They went in, they loved it. Um, they offered us full price. Another guy offered us full price, then a bidding war started happening. We had three people at first. It just started going up and up. And we were like, look, man, we want to do business with all of you. Yep. Highest and best. And we ended up getting it at. Was it 160, right? 160. Ah. 160K. So from 101 to 160. And here's the thing. After we accepted the offer at 160, the other guy kept coming back. And he was like, all right, yep. I'll go higher than that. Like, you could have kept going. We shut it down. We were like, no, we're not yep. going to do that. We already gave our word to this buyer. 
is done. You know, final and best, you didn't give us your best. So so we had it locked in at 160. So now the clock's ticking. So yep. title issues like crazy. Well, it wasn't title, it, it was the guy was still off the grid a little bit. Finally, he, was, he was, wasn't responding to emails, wasn't responding to the title company. We're sitting here with a contract at 101, a buyer at 160, 59K on the line, and, and this guy, like, what's going on? Finally, he, he steps up, and all of a sudden, he's like, yep, I'm ready to close. Right? So at, at, in the meantime, the time's ticking. Our buyer's sitting on the money that he needs to buy the property and rehab the money. So he's sitting on this money, not making any money on his money, waiting for the deal. You know, he's starting to look for other deals. Yeah, he's like, look, guys, if this doesn't happen, we're going to go. And, yep. you know, we were like, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we got it. We're in communication. So yep. the guy finally responded. So it took about, what, two, three months before yep. we actually got the guy, the seller. He thought he needed some extravagant paperwork. All he needed was one little thing. And yep. the title company, I said, just call the damn title company. They'll tell you what you need. <laughs> and he finally did it. And they told him, oh, this is all you need. He was like, oh, that's it? I was looking for the wrong thing. And yep. he got the paperwork. Everything started happening very quickly after yep. that. Next thing you know, we were closed, I think, two weeks later. So. And we got our check, 59. Got and our we check. Just like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> so that was a phenomenal deal for us. Um, you know what? Just, guys, be bold. If I offered you one-on-one, -on -one, what would you do? <laughs> yep. You know, he was ready to go with his friend, somebody he knew all his life. Send the contract. And just send it. So the moral of this story is follow up. All right. This guy was from a year ago, a year prior to our closing day. And we just kept touching him, kept hitting him up, kept hitting him up. And we finally connected. We finally set the appointment and we were in action. We made the offer. Yep. And it wasn't good enough. We made another one and we got it because we knew this is the area we definitely need to be in. So hell of a deal. Follow up, follow up, cool. follow up, guys. Don't let leads die just because they don't respond. And, right. and the other lesson is you don't need to know what the house is worth. You don't need to know what the repairs are, right? You, 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 sometimes you got to take action. Sometimes you can figure that stuff out and sometimes you can't. And sometimes the ones that you can't, at least in, in, in our experience, those have been the ones where we get the most money, where we make the most money. Because we don't know what the ARV is, the buyer doesn't know what the ARV is. He could be making up numbers higher than we're going to make up. Right. Yeah, so it's, it's just one of those things. Right. Just lock it up. Don't be afraid to take action. scenario, you have to cancel it. If you don't get it sold, big deal, it happens. But definitely get it, because this can happen to you. This could be you. Absolutely. You know? And in certain markets in California and, you know, yeah, this in is the West. where it starts. Yeah. <laughs> like you're in the six figures, you know. So, guys, take action. Stuff is fun. Cool. <laughs> it's exciting. So, so anyway, we appreciate being able to share this story with you, right? As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. This is a conversation. Sure. Questions at goodvibesre.com. So, like, reach out to us. We want to have a conversation with you. We want to support you. We want to be able to, you know, put out there. We don't we don't charge you anything for this. We're not looking to charge anybody. We're not having, you know, a big course that we're selling. We just want to share information. Yep, this is a pleasure. So, guys, thank you very much. Have a great day, and we'll see you next Wednesday for Chat with Chad Up. Oh. <laughs>